It's a heavyweight encounter between uh, these two 35-year-olds, Jamil McCline and Zuri Lawrence. As, they, as McCline tries to jump right back into the fray in the heavyweight division, Lawrence tries to make a place for himself in that division. We are uh, awaiting these two fighters. And, uh, and so we're just about set to go. Let's go up to uh, Bob Alexander. Well, ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the ring at this time, here is Zuri Lawrence. Here comes Zuri Lawrence, 35-year-old, who comes in off a loss to Sultan Ibragimov, a heavyweight of note, who stopped Lawrence in the 11th round in their last fight. That was in April. He has sparred with Jamil McCline before. That was in 1997, but this is for real, and of course, it's a little different. There is Zuri Lawrence. 35-year-old from uh, Poughkeepsie, New York, now living uh, in uh, Wappinger Falls. And um, he's a heavyweight that comes in with no knockouts, and that's an anomaly for heavyweights. It is, it is. But he's more of a stylish kind of guy, you know, uh, uh, kind of like Foreman. Picks his opponent apart, turns him around, spins and turns. All right, we'll see how he does. The man he's going to try and spin and turn is coming up now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as he enters the ring, let's welcome Jamil Big Time McCline. There's Jamil McCline, pretty wired for this fight. He sensed it, I think, in his interview with uh, with Sean, but it was also evident uh, yesterday as well. He has challenged for the heavyweight title twice. Comes in off a third round KO of Steve Pinnell in August before he got a couple of losses against Calvin Brock and Chris Burr. Fighter who has performed at the top level of boxing. He's wearing golden trunks tonight. Sounds like a movie. Golden trunks. <laughs> he says, I'm back. He said boxing is fun again, and it is fun. As long as you're having, in the, having fun in the sport, you will do well. Well, he's, he's certainly heavily involved in the music in this entrance. As our mother folks. Jamil McCline claims he is in the best shape he's been in in the last four years. We'll see. Let's see how these guys match up. And uh, we take a look at uh, the tail of the tape, and clearly the height weight advantage to Jamil McCline. And that is the key difference here. So Zuri Lawrence facing a much bigger man. And when they sparred, Lawrence said the reach was real evidence to him. But he said he did not outreach me. Yep. He said he jabbed with Jamil. He said he knew exactly where he was in the ring. You know, big guys in boxing, sometimes they're a little clumsy. But Jamil McCline is not that way. All right, well, we're set to go in this heavyweight encounter. Let's go to Bob Alexander. Ladies and gentlemen, our next fight of the evening is scheduled for 10 rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. Your judges scoring this fight at ringside are Rick Bays, Mark Streisand, and Bill Ray. Your referee in charge of the action is Tommy Kimmins. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with the black trim. He weighed in at 238 and a half pounds. His professional record, 19 wins. 10 losses with four draws. He comes from Wappinger, New York. Let's welcome Zuri Lawrence. There's a opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the gold trunks with the black trim. He weighed in at 268 and a half pounds. His professional record, 32 wins, five losses, three draws with 20 wins by knockout. He comes from Port Jefferson, New York. Let's welcome Jamil Big Time McBride. <laughs> 10 rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division of referee Tommy Kimmins with the instruction. Up. We're 
set for round number one in this 10 round heavyweight encounter between uh, Jamil McCline and Zuri Lawrence. There is Zuri Lawrence who says the key to winning this fight is his jab. We'll see if he can be effective with that. And across the way is Jamil McCline, 35 year old longtime contender who wants to get back into everyone's top 10. He's still ranked number nine by the IBF, but has fallen out of the other top 10. And even from the get-go, Sean, yep. McCline told us he's going to box more than he has in recent fights. And he said, I was successful in the past because of my conditioning. He says he's in fantastic condition for this fight. But it was Lawrence who came out and started jabbing. You know, my, my father worked my corner. My father always told me the last thing he said before the bell is start like set the jab. You get the jab working, everything else kind of kind of like falls in place. If the jab works, everything works. I'm gonna see who can establish that Lawrence certainly wants to. Well that's what he learned when he sparred with Jameel McLean. He was successful with the jab. You step in there and use it. But here you don't have headgears and your gloves are a lot smaller. We talked about took place back in 1997. Ah, Did you call that? Uh, yes, I was there. You were there, yeah. I had to be in the gym that day. They said, Would you announce this? <laughs> While you're here, just announce a little bit of this fight. McCline and his people looked at all the tapes. Yeah, let's work on the inside of McCline. Oh, and Lawrence with a good fight. We've seen more, we saw more body shots here in this first round than this since the whole last fight. Downstairs by nice to see a heavyweight going to the body. Halfway through round number one, McCline and his people looked at old tapes of him and they said, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Uh, and they're going to try very hard to get back to what he was doing three or four years ago. And he says, I'm still a top ten guy because I'm an awesome fighter. When he really is, look at his back. Look at the muscles in his back. You know, Jamil McCline has such power in those punches. Ten years as a pro. His style is a boxer puncher. 20 KOs in his 32 wins. Got in the gym in 1994. Our first and only amateur fight, he knocked a guy out in the first round, so he thought, hey, I can do this. And he has, he's done well. He comes in on a three round uh, knockout win under Steve Pinnell, that was right here in this very arena back in April. Kind of shaking out the cobwebs. Pinnell, 34 and 8. So round number one, both men have tried to establish a jet. Both men have thrown some very good body shots. Step back. Let go. Final seconds here in round number one, and these heavyweights are throwing lots of punches. We like to see that from the heavyweights. Really a fast first round for heavyweight. Yep. Ah! We followed Jamil McCline back in the corner. I say to him. And then a Jimmy Glenn in his corner, the Papa of boxing. Jimmy Glenn at Times Square Boxing Gym in New York. Still has it. He's a great boxing guy. Worked a lot with my father who was in boxing. I've known Jimmy since I was a little bit of a boy. He is Mr. Experience. He's the broken spirit of uh, New York Times Square. Solid guy. Jamil with this flurry. Now, I like this. You don't see that very much. Look at that. Shoe shine punches. You turn your fists up, palm up, and you, you punch like a shoe shine, a shoe shiner would punch. Ray Robinson made that famous. He clean your clock on the inside and come over the top. It's round number two. We have it in the second round, and uh, we're scheduled for ten a couple of heavyweights. Neil McClellan, Billy Trunks, and the black and the jury lost two 35-year-olds so in distinctly different positions in the heavyweight uh, situation because McClellan has been a contender for the last five or four or five years. Uh, Still ranks in the top ten in the IBF. And Lawrence, uh, who came in here with a uh, 
19 and 10 record, hoping at four and draws, hoping to get into contention. And some really good skills from Lawrence. You know, we talked the last part about the foot feints of Foreman. Look at the hand feints of Lawrence. Look at the, his, his hands constantly moving. You're, you're giving something to your opponent. You're, you're putting your hands out there, kind of like getting him to blink. <laughs> Klein not blinking though, he's not too much of a pro for that. Good left uppercut to the body. Klein working very well. Klein challenged twice for the heavyweight uh, title for the WBL crown in 2002 against Vladimir Klitschko and stopped in the 10th. Then against his good friend Chris Bird uh, last year. Stop! Lawrence moving in there. It's a good He had third down in the second round, but uh, lost a very controversial uh, 12 round decision. Split decision. Yeah. Chris Bird is a hard fighter to face. Kind of like a uh, former we talked about in my spot. All kinds of different looks. Bingo. Now, Zuri Lawrence is a uh, never, you know, never knocks anybody out. Hasn't knocked anybody out. So he made the point that for him, conditioning is everything. And the other thing that is everything for him is you have to really try and win every round you can win. There are no such things as if you round off if you have no chance to. Uh, Right. You know, I had such great respect for these kind of fighters because they did. That's the way they fought. They just got in there to, to go the distance. They tried to pick up the victory. Sometimes they take a fight on last minute notice. They take a fight in another man's hometown. I always had just great respect and admiration for those kind of fighters. Well, in Missouri Lawrence's case, I think he's just not a big enough hitter in the heavyweight division. Sure. So try to he players. Not a good idea. But Klein got hit with a big left hook. Oh, 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 oh. Is he in trouble? Look at that, just as we're talking about Lawrence. The Klein has been in trouble before in fights. Oh, this fight with Senator Boswell a couple years ago. Wildly exciting match. Uh, he was in trouble several times during the fight. Came back and knocked Boswell out. Uh, but he was in Plenty of difficult stuff. He gets separated easily. Yeah, Boswell undefeated in that fight. Yeah. Only one round. Pretty good second round for Zuri Lawrence. Ah! Zuri Lawrence back to his corner. Really good, good second round for him. But then he can really the knock on Lawrence. He gets fighters hurt. He's got power, but he can't put, he can't quite put them away. You know, you've got you to take another level. You've got to really zero in. When you have somebody hurt, you really got to focus even more so than you have any other point in the fight. Here's a look at what uh, was happening early from Zuri. Looked like he was in a hurry with uh, these punches. Good right cross that landed well. McCline uh, Survived that a little bit later, later in the round. It was Zuri Lawrence who put on the pressure. McLean trying to hold his hands up around his face. A few of those punches got through. Pretty good second round for Lawrence. Let's see if he can capitalize. We move into the third in this scheduled 10 round. Jamil McLean in the gold trunks and in the black. It is Zuri Lawrence and some surprising power around two from Lawrence as he probably even the score in this fight. Look at those feints. Look at those jerks. That's very nice from Lawrence. So important because you control the guy. And look at how McCline turns him. He turns Wait, no Lawrence. The way to do that is you step over to your right. You step your behind your opponent. Tanya Kimmons, you hear him. He's a very vocal referee tonight. Our third commentator. Joining us for the broadcast. Yes, exactly. From the ring. Left hand yeah. underneath a moment ago by McClyde. You know, McClyde, I mentioned he's rated number ninth by the idea. Uh, they're very angry at the WBC that pushed him down all the way to 33rd, and certainly he's not the 33rd best heavyweight in the world. Clearly, he might be a little higher than that. Um, but um, they said wins will take care of it. We just got to win and try to get ranked well. Surrey Lawrence really can throw that left hook to the body shot. I mean, he's got it as a boxer and with no knockouts. He cranks it up there, he? He's got good power in the left hand. The reason is, see how his weight is centered on the left foot? No! no button. So his left hand is usually more, more powerful than his right. Tries a left uppercut from way out. A dangerous maneuver, but he got away with it. 
with it. Favorite punches again. Coming into this fight, he knew that he was going to be in a must-win situation. He said, if I'm going to play with the big boys, i got to win this fight tonight. So he really has a lot on the line. In the boxing since he was 17, his friend took him to the gym, and he beat his friend up. <laughs> he went 36-7 and seven as an amateur. Lawrence did. Under a minute left to go in round number three. And a double in the Corey Lawrence. Not afraid to rumble with the man who is uh, some 30 pounds bigger than him. McCline coming back on the right hand. This is the, what's happening in this round is what some people have criticized Jamil McCline for, kind of zoning out in the fight and allowing people to take the play away from him. Yeah, well, he, he got hit too. <laughs> yeah, don't make his own way. Yes, it will.
Jamil McLeod is capable of a sudden outburst that will turn a fight around its own. Even though the performance by Lawrence has been very good so far, Jamil McLeod has been a very dangerous fellow in there. Oh, he's got a big right hand. Powerful punches. But here in round number four for Jerry Lawrence, he loves the way this round went and really the way a good portion of this fight has gone. Jimmy Graham. Here is Zuri Lawrence. He was real effective early in this round. And remember, the judges are going to that's going to the, the judges are going to remember the last part of the round more vividly. But uh, here is what they remember more vividly. Right at the end of the round, it was McCline kind of that'll beat your legs down. You know that'll take you to wear your legs out. Leaning over like that, been 267 pounds on top of it. Get that towel, get over the foot, and run up. We're approaching the midway point of this heavyweight matchup. Zuri Lawrence in the black trunks, and Jamil McCline in the gold. Lawrence came in with an 8, a 19, and 10 record. And Jamil McCline, a perennial contender in the heavyweight division. 
for sure. When well, he was pretty good on stage, so you have to assume that he's got the moves. Right, Chris, I'm a competitor. Ludicrous. The thing is, with Brett Ludicrous right now, that Jameel McClellan is thinking is Ludicrous that Jerry Lawrence is still in here with me, but it was McClellan using his upper body strength, and it was Lawrence trying to fight off the ropes. I'd like to see some more turns from, from Lawrence, but he's scoring well. Yeah, some of that body work there off the ropes for Lawrence, not too bad. Here's Zuri. We've reached the halfway point in this match, and it has been an entertaining heavyweight match. Zuri Lawrence in the black turns and Jameel McClain in the gold. It's been a spirited affair, a lot of punches thrown, maybe more than you would anticipate from uh, a couple of heavyweights. And uh, whether that last flurry uh, got Jamil McClain that fifth round, we don't know, but this could be a very close fight on scorecards as well right now. Tommy Kimmons is the third man in the ring. Lawrence continues to be the aggressor, jab and a straight right hand, push McCline against the ropes. And now a little bit of wrestling on the inside. We haven't seen too much of this. And I would say that Lawrence would get the short end of this ticket. Good right hand from Lawrence. High on the head. Both of them so aggressive now. See how close they're moving in. You gotta punch sometimes. You gotta punch while you're moving backwards. Let your opponent run into something. Tommy Kimmons now forced to be a little more active in this match. A little more grabbing and holding and wrestling. And all this hugging and holding is going to benefit Jamil. He is 30 pounds bigger than Zuri Lawrence. Weighed in at 267 and a half. And uh, Lawrence at 238 and a half. Heavyweights in general a lot bigger these days. Right hand by Lawrence and Jamil comes back with his own right hand. This is the kind of round, Sean, it's going to be very difficult to score this round with all the wrestlers. Right. Unless you're a wrestling judge, but they are able to, you know, give a, a turn or two. Some swelling around the left eye of Zuri now, one of the other effects of, of this kind of warring fight. You know, a fight like this, it, it, you, you find out the next day you got bruises all up and down your back and all up and down your sides and everywhere. They, it's just a difficult way to fight. And you get bruises and nicks and knocks all over your body. Again, the body work by Sir Lawrence. Oftentimes, that's ignored by judges inappropriately, but he's done some good work. Nice right hand on the inside by Jamil McClain. In as we head to the last 30 seconds of this round, round six could be a pivotal round because it's been a very close one and uh, might prove important in the overall scoring if this goes 10 rounds. Very important, and it looks as though the tide of the fight has, sh has shifted. You know, early in this fight, it seemed like Lawrence was imposing his will. Now the last couple of events, four rounds, I think Jamil has imposed his will. The Klein heads back to his corner where Jimmy Glenn wraps some words. Let's just see it. Just a bit for Jamil. This uh, Zuri just has a, a big heart and a lot of guts. Walking in, and he just gets clipped with a left hook from Jamil. See the swelling around the left eye. There's a little bit of a cut or an abrasion right there underneath the eyebrow, over the eyelid on the outside of that eye. You take a beating in there. They're tough. We head into round number seven in this heavyweight encounter. And uh, like our previous fight, which Yuri Foreman carved out a 10-round victory, no knockdowns in this fight. Nobody's been seriously hurt, though we've seen some pretty heavy punches landed. I'm Al 
Bernstein along with Shauna Brady and the two principals in the ring are Jamil McClellan in the gold trunks and Zuri Lawrence in the black trunks. A couple of 35-year-old heavyweights. Jamil McClellan who won his last fight against Steve Finnell but lost his previous two trying to get himself back into a contending situation in the heavyweight division. Yeah, not too bad. Goes to Chris Bird, the IBF heavyweight champion, and Calvin Brock, who is now the heavyweight champion. Former well, uh, contender, top contender, Calvin Brock, that's for sure. Wait, step back, step back. back. Chris Bird, of course, the, uh, yes. the title holder. Uh, yes, yes, and Chris Bird is. And Vladimir Klitschko, the WBO champion. Mm -hmm. Take a step back. Okay. Halfway through, you don't know what to do with jam. Yes, it's not always a good idea. And there's a couple of nice jabs from Big Time McCline looking to get back in the Big Time. He says he's formed a path to get to the top guy and then to force a champion to face him. Looking for a top contender to face. But you gotta face these kinds of fighters like Lawrence. And look at this. Here comes Zori. When he gets some distance uh, and starts those combinations, for the most part, McClung has kind of gone into a cocoon. Uh, oh. combination by Lawrence. Good luck to you know, he's had that left hook several times tonight. It's been a great weapon for him. Zuri picks that left hook really well. And again, we talked about the power of the left hand from him. That's where his power is because of his stance. Wait, no question. Right there. Good left hook by McCline a moment ago. The output in terms of number of punches clearly the edge to Zuri Lawrence. Now, Jamil McClain made a, a very pointed comment to us that he's in the best shape he's been in since 2001. Uh, will that turn out to be so? Because uh, in truth, he's been pretty economical with his punches. Is that because of fatigue or no by design? No well, we'll see. Just moments left to go here in round number seven. Let's go.